Welcome to the Elevating Funeral Service podcast. If you want to run a successful funeral home, cemetery, or pet cremation service, you don't have to be the one that has the lowest price. You do need to be the one that offers the most value, provides the best customer experience, and clearly communicates that in your marketing. On this weekly podcast, Ellery and Welton will show easy ways to demonstrate value to families and create differentiation that helps you stand out from the competition. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Elevating Funeral Service. I'm your host, Ellery Bowker. I'm with my good friend and co-host, Welton Hong. And today we have a special guest. We have Tim Bridgers from Live Oak Bank. How are you guys doing today? Awesome. It's, it's so hot out here, but it's awesome. It's always <laughs> hot in Vegas, isn't it? 110. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, we're, we're doing good here at Live Oak Bank. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for all the listeners, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the PPP loan. Um, and primarily we're going to talk about how to make sure that you're doing everything you can, um, to have that loan forgiven. So what we've done is we've invited Tim on, uh, Tim, uh, obviously was live Oak bank. They're the largest SBA lender in the country, I believe. And Tim, when the coronavirus first started having all these lockdowns, when the CARES Act was being presented, uh, Tim and his team at live Oak bank was very instrumental in getting educational information out to us. Uh, and basically, they kind of just took the muddy waters that was out there every day, and they cleaned it up, and they made everything understandable. Um, so, Tim, you know, I thought what we might do is we might talk about kind of what the original plan was for the PPP, right? So it was this huge chunk of money that was being thrown as a stimulus package, which I'm thankful for. We we obviously took advantage of that. Um, and the most appealing thing to that, obviously, was the forgiveness uh, aspect of it. And so what I thought we might do is if you could just kind of give us a rundown of the original idea um, sure. and, and maybe we'll talk about some other things and what some of the challenges are that made some of these rule changes necessary. So I'll let you sort of start there. Absolutely. Now, again, I appreciate the opportunity. We, we want to make sure that everyone has accurate information and uh, it's ever changing. It's ever changing. When this first came out, there was an eight week period of time um, that the business owner had in order to use the funds appropriately. Um, in that eight week period, the clock started on that um, when the loan was funded, right? There were a lot of questions there. It was unsure uh, for businesses that had reduced the size of their staff. There were questions about, okay, we'll do our restaff um, because obviously the loan was qualified based on 2019 uh, staffing expenses. So there was that question lingering out there. So people were unsure, you know, how to use the money if they should, they were scared to. Um, and as you know, it's been, uh, it's been well past eight weeks since probably the first PPP loan was approved. So there was a lot of gray area there. Um, and the message then was just hang tight, you know, use the funds for the eligible use of proceeds, which I'll actually review here in just a minute, um, and hang tight for forgiveness information will be coming out. Um, so in terms of the eligible use of proceeds at the time, 75% of the proceeds had to be used for salary related expenses, such as salaries, wages, tips, up to $100,000 for the individual. So if the individual made $150,000, um, this could be used up to $100,000 for that individual. And that had to be done over an eight week period of time. Um, in addition to salaries, um, outside of that 75%, the 25% could be used um, you know, for things like mortgage and rent obligations. It can be used for utility payments uh, and things like that. Um, inside of the wage bucket of 75%, uh, things like healthcare expenses, retirement contributions, uh, state uh, tax imposed, you know, taxes employees on employees um, and things like that. So that was a pretty clear rule. That has been updated. Um, and we were expecting some updates as of Last week, we received some and we're expecting more. Um, but as of right now, it seems like the SBA has made it um, quite a bit more flexible for the business owner to adapt to kind of the unknowns. The first thing that was changed is that the, the loan term was extended from two years um, to five years. Okay. So, so what that means is that let's say a business chose to use some funds that were not eligible for forgiveness. Uh, for whatever reason, they decided that the rate and term was, was okay for them, or maybe a business misappropriated some funds uh, unintentionally and they wouldn't have it forgiven. In that case, the first original rules 
um, they had two years to pay that back. Now, as you guys know, two years is a pretty tight window of time. And if a business has already been impacted by COVID, uh, cash flow can be tight. So that could be very dangerous, right? Now, was there a uh, deferment period on the initial payment as well? Uh, so, so yeah, that, that deferment period has been extended to the end of this year. So they have six months, basically. So what was it though? Was it six months and then plus two years? Yes, that's my understanding. Yes. So I, I believe that there was a two-year deferment of interest only following the forgiveness period of time, the eight-week okay. window. And I can confirm that with you. Um, but now that time has been extended um, basically until the end of end of this year. So uh, basically they're giving businesses the opportunity to apply for forgiveness, not have to make a payment. If all their debt's forgiven, they're technically not making a payment. For those businesses that will end up having a loan payment, technically they're gonna kick off 2021 making those payments at that time, um, unless they choose to do that sooner. So um, those were kind of the original uh, rules. And like I said, um, one of the first changes was the extension of the loan term from two to five years. So now the business owner that has to repay the debt for whatever reason, they now have a five-year loan term, which is a pretty significant um, change. Well, Tim, what were some of the challenges that surfaced that made that original requirement um, so difficult? So, you know, people got the loan and I've heard things like, you know, people didn't, they, they let staff go, but they didn't want to bring staff back because they really didn't have anything for them to do. I mean, what were some of the challenges that came along with that eight week window? Yeah. I mean, I, obviously the staffing was a, was a big one. I mean, a lot of businesses for whatever reason, non COVID related may have changed their staffing size. Uh, maybe a business was um, imp seeing impacts due to cremation already. And maybe they were already adapting to that. Um, so for those businesses, it was kind of, it was really confusing um, to say, okay, well, I have this money. I don't want to pay it back. Or I want to be eligible for forgiveness. So do I just hire these folks back for that short period of time and then, and then let them go again? Um, and I don't think that was the spirit of the program. So that was a, that was a big challenge up front was helping business owners understand the true intent of the, of the CARES Act. And that was to help maintain staff. Um, and if you didn't need that, obviously just pay it back. So that, that, was a, that was a pretty big, and then the eligible use of proceeds was a pretty big question mark and concern uh, because, you know, us saying to you, hey, you can use wage-related expenses up to 75%, and then the other 25% can be utilities and um, things like that. Uh, you're just scared to make the wrong decision. So there was a lot of confusion over that as well. Yeah, you know, on, on one side, I think, and, and I'm sure Welton will agree, you know, we I'm super thankful, right, for the opportunity to, to have this help. Oh, yeah. um, but yeah. at the same time, it has injected so much confusion into the market on both ends of this. Uh, because mm -hmm. when we originally applied for our PPP loan, you know, we're going to the Bank of America, and I don't know which what their rank is, but they're a pretty big bank. Mm -hmm. And we go in there, and they're as glazed over on their eyes as I am, right? They don't have any idea what's going on. They're getting daily calls, daily updates from, from wherever, from Charlotte, I guess, and trying to figure out kind of handle it. And now on the backside of that, so as our company, you know, we've complied with everything. We actually had a separate bank account. We did everything we're supposed to do. And so now I ask our bank, hey, is there any paperwork that we need to fill out to apply for the forgiveness? And they're just as glazed over as they were when we went to talk to them about getting the PPP loan. So there's confusion on the backside of that uh, as well. So um, I say, yeah. Chase, I, I, yeah, I get weekly emails from them. Still nothing. I'm like, how it's past eight weeks already. How can I have this be forgiven? Like I'm just sitting there waiting. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And that's, that's been a consistent um, response that we've been getting. Uh, we get a lot of calls from customers that are with other banks trying to get clarity. And obviously we get calls from our customer. Um, I think, you know, the, the spirit of the SBA and this whole CARES Act was to quickly provide some relief, which mm -hmm. the way I see it is that it was really meant to uh, enable a lot of families to still have some income because that was their jobs, right? And that was the true thrust of the program. Um, and, you know, I think the SBA really did expect the businesses to use it in that way. Um, and I think that's why the message early on was, hey, 
look, just focus on using 75% of your proceeds to staffing expenses. Let's keep those people employed. Um, so, so the economy is unimpacted and they're not impacted along with their families. We'll figure out the rest as we go. And that, that was hard for business owners to, to, to really accept. Right. You know, I, I'm sure you have no way of knowing this, but do you have a sense of how many funeral homes or as a percentage of the funeral homes out there took advantage of this? I really don't. We don't have those statistics. Um, I know that we spoke to a lot. Um, <laughs> Probably yeah, like all of them. It feels like all of them, and, but it was, it was kind of a special time. You know, I think if I let you in on what it felt like on our end, um, you know, it was a sad time because you, you heard so many sad stories, but it was also a very uplifting, encouraging time knowing that mm -hmm. you really were a part of something that was helping these businesses and these families. And I can't tell you how many stories we received um, over and over of how, you know, businesses were saved as a result of these funds. Um, so it, it, it was, it was a pretty significant percentage if I had to guess. So in, in terms of, in terms of the transition of the program, you know, there's some updates now that I think are important for people to know. Um, I think there's a lot more clarity now than obviously before, as we talked about, um, you know, the eight week period has been extended now to 24 weeks, which is, which is really nice. I, you know, some, some folks are probably actually approaching that. <laughs> They're probably closer to that window than they are the actual eight week window. Right. But that's given businesses a lot more time to use those funds. And they've also reduced the 75% that is required to be used on wage expenses down to 60%, right? So what I think that does, it actually helps the business that, that you know, maybe downsize their staff size. They can reallocate some of those funds to utilities, um, and things like that. And that really, really, truly helps the business in addition to helping the staff. So that's been a pretty big change in the program. Um, and of course, now, like I said earlier, the deferral period has extended, um, you know, pretty much for 24 weeks. And the, defer, the deferment period pretty much matches that time frame to the end of the year. Um, so families can, uh, businesses can breathe they can take the rest of the year, make sure the funds are allocated correctly. Like you said, they can track it right, make sure they have all their documents. So when it's time to apply for forgiveness, they'll be ready. So just to recap, the big changes are that the, that the payback period went from two years to five years. Yes. The requirement to use it on payroll went from 75 to 60. Mm -hmm. um, and then the uh, period went from eight weeks to 24 weeks. That's correct. Gotcha. Gotcha. So do you see any additional changes coming to that? You know, I mean, we're getting updates on a weekly basis. Um, you know, and, and the information we just highlighted is what we let, you know, that was the latest update. So some of that could shift. It could, you know, that deferment period could extend the proportionate, the, the percentage of wages could, could decrease. Um, but as of right now, that's where it stands. In terms of what to expect, I mean, you know, it's hard to say. I, I think that, um, I do think that that time frame uh, to use those um, resources that the businesses received uh, in the right way, I do think 24 weeks is realistic. Um, I think a five-year term is much more realistic because a lot of these loan amounts were not, you know, they were a pretty small percentage compared to the revenue or income of some of these businesses, right? Right, right. I mean, um, so I, I think five years puts businesses that do have to repay it in a much better position. So a couple, a couple of other things then, Tim, and again, we appreciate your insights into this. You and I talked off offline before we started, um, you know, there was the first wave of money, right. That was depleted. Yep. I think in 14 days, they, I think the, the was it $350 billion in 14 days, which is just, mm -hmm. uh, unimaginable. And then the second uh, batch, which they expected to run out really quickly, didn't, didn't come to fruition, right? I understand there's still a hundred plus billion dollars sitting there. So that being said, for the funeral homes that may be listening that didn't take advantage of it, is there still time? Can they still get in? There's still time. Um, you know, we actually have until tomorrow to accept uh, applications. So, um, you know, we're happy to, to help you. You know, you will need to reach out to us today or first thing tomorrow morning in order to get your application in. 
I don't know what the time frame is for other banks, but I do know that the program expires uh, on the 30th uh, or that's the deadline as of, as of today. Um, so yeah, it is important to contact your bank. Uh, like I said, we're happy to, to try to help you. We'll do all we can. Uh, and then I guess there's another follow-up question to that is, do you, and I know there's no crystal ball here, but sure. do you have a sense of whether or not you think uh, there's going to be additional um, relief coming? You know what? It's, goodness, it's hard to say. I, 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 would, I would say that possibly in a different form. Um, you know, there has been a lot of stimulus, uh, you know, in, in the stimulus package, you're having a lot of lending options that have come out of this, right? I mean, you have uh, obviously the six month principal and interest grant that um, SBA borrowers will receive if they close their loan by the, uh, by the end of September. Um, so for us, that means the 25th of September, uh, which is a pretty big deal. You think about a business that is acquiring another business or expanding or doing a necessary refi, um, you know, they're going to have six months of those payments where they can, you know, build their cash flow and retain those funds. That's a pretty big deal. Um, so I think that's, in my way, that's an extension of the program beyond just these PPP funds. Um, of course, you have also the USDA has also put out uh, a version of the CARES Act for, um, for qualified areas. Um, USDA obviously is you know, dictated by the Roy areas that you can go into the map, type your address and see if you qualify. Um, USDA is, is for real estate only transactions. Um, and, you know, there's some information on the USDA website where you can read the eligible uses, but that's definitely something that people should, should check out. Um, there's also a Main Street Lending Program that's being released. And that's, uh, as of right now, our understanding that that's a million dollar loan um, and above. Uh, we're still waiting on the eligible use of proceeds there. But again, all these, um, all these products are intended to help, you know, bring businesses back and help them get through this time. You also have the SBA 504 program that's, that's out there. So there's a lot of different programs. We're actually participating in pretty much all those. Um, and we're waiting on details to help with that. So uh, that's, that's my thought on that. Ellery, I think it's hard to answer the question if more funds will come out, but I think that um, they're also making some pretty attractive loan products to help these businesses during this time. Well, and what's your sense on the funeral homes you've, you've been talking to? Did most of your customers take advantage of the program? Quite a bit of them do, actually, and it's, it's a huge relief for them, right? Because we, just like Tim, when PVP started, when we started hearing words about PVP, we'll reach out to a client, hey, make sure you heard about PVP, we send them some information about it. So I think um, I will say majority of our clients, they do apply it and did get PVP. Awesome. Great. That's great. Well, Tim, I, I'm a big fan of, uh, of learning lessons, you know, and I try not to miss any opportunities that I had, you know, and, and a sure. couple of lessons that I took away from this one was, you know, there's a, there's a tremendous amount of value in having a relationship with a banker, right? Oh, yeah. Not a bank you know, um, and having, uh, you know, being able to contact a single person. Uh, I live in a super small town and I used to bank with a super small bank here and we saw the guy at lunch every day and et cetera. And then uh, it turned out that I decided to go with Bank of America just because of the flexibility and their online and all this other stuff. And when I went to get our uh, PPP loan, um, you know, they didn't even know who we were, although we worked with them, we had accounts with them, you know, but we were just a number to them. So, uh, you know, one takeaway I would have would be uh, to have a relationship with your banker, um, you know, to do that. So any lessons that uh, you take away, Welton? So I actually do have a question for Tim. Oops, I think he dropped off. Oh, yeah, but yep. I think we lost him. He'll be, he should yeah. come back here shortly. So I want to ask him about what documentation. I think that's still something I, I, if they know, I know it's not for certain, but anything I can do to make sure, like, paperwork wise, what should I need? Like separate account or so how, how can I make sure to? Yeah. You know, it's interesting because, uh, so I had an, I had a, a call with our accountant, um, I think two weeks ago and we talked about it. And one thing that we're having to do is we're having uh -huh. to do um, a midstream payroll, if you know what I mean. So we have to run uh -huh. a separate payroll through that account. Yep. Through that account. Well, it's not through that account, but it's, it's at an odd time. 
so like we run payroll, like our, our folks get paid here every two weeks. Right. Uh, but now we are having to do a mid a payroll, like on a certain date, uh-huh. right. To met, to meet oh. that eight week timeline. Interesting. Um, yeah. So everybody will still get paid at the same time, but I don't know, somehow internally they have to run uh, oh. a particular payroll at a certain time. Yeah. I hate accounting. I'm yeah, just telling you the I'm truth. Like, I can't. I can't stand it. I'd rather. Uh, I'd rather eat glass than yeah. uh, deal with accounting. I can't. Uh, I can't yeah. stand. It. I just want to make sure that yeah. you know are our bills paid. Are we saving? Are we yeah. investing right? Are we doing all the right, right. things? But the actual uh, accounting field, you know, not my thing. Well, yeah, because so. yeah, that's still my anxious thing here. Is just, man, what I just want to be prepared. What type of paperwork do you need? And I just want to get it ready. So when Chase sent me an email, hey, it's time to yeah. write. <laughs> and I'm ready. I can yeah. just go on there and get that written off. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, definitely. I hate seeing that on my own. Uh, when I lock into Chase, it's, it's just there. I'm like, oh. Yeah, no, no. If I, if I see yeah. a number that big, I want it to be mine. You know, not, uh, not one <laughs> I owe, right? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Mm. Well, listen, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. It looks like Tim yeah. dropped um, okay. his have a connectivity issue, but yeah. boy, we, we really appreciate him coming on. Um, yeah. You know, he, oh, yeah. um, and, and I remember emailing him after this thing started, we were probably three weeks into it. And I remember emailing Tim, just thanking him for yeah. just bringing clarity right. to it because oh, yeah. there was so much confusion right. going on and, and um, you know, right. banks didn't know what was going yeah. on. And so, yeah. um, you know, and I've known Tim for a while and the team at live Oak bank is just super, oh, yeah. super a group of people. So oh, yeah. Uh, we really appreciate them. So we'll wrap it up. Uh, I guess the lessons here are that, you know, get with your accountants, make sure you've got everything uh, taken care of as far as paperwork goes. And and um, when uh, the time comes to start uh, applying for forgiveness, you know, hopefully you'll have everything ready to go. But oh, yeah. um, uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, if there's anything that Welton and I can do for you, please let us know. And um, we appreciate it. And we'll talk to everyone soon. Mm-hmm.